you know, I, I can remember, you know, loading up a syringe when I, I had, a, I'd gotten some cocaine along with the methamphetamines and I mixed them together. And I remember putting in my phone, nine one one, which for you is I think nine nine nine. Yeah. All emergency service. I, I had nine one one dialed and the phone laying on my lap as I was injecting this just in case something went wrong. I mean, that's like a really good indication of you shouldn't be freaking doing this if if <laughs> you gotta put nine one one in. Ah oh, God, just some dumb shit. But one of the things that I noticed was with the meth, I didn't need the painkillers. And I think this is why it ended up hooking me. Because I thought, well, I can just stop this. I don't feel like I'm addicted to this. Uh, and that was before I ended up shooting it. But I noticed I could get off the painkillers finally. So I had this kind of positive momentum with using the new substance. Turns out that new substance was an even bigger monkey on my back and <laughs> was far more damaging. You're going, you're going that down that rabbit hole of things getting oh, worse and worse Jesus, and worse. Man. Oh, it just was a nightmare. So I ended up finally getting off the painkillers, but then I was full blown addicted to crystal meth. And, and I, you know, at that point, if you think that you don't think clearly with painkillers in your system, you don't think clearly at all with that shit in you. In fact, it takes your thoughts and it'll twist every freaking neuron in your brain into something different. And uh, God dang, you know, at that point, it just a, just an example of how twisted your mind gets. My whole life, I loved bands like Metallica, Pantera, heavy metal kind of stuff. I could not listen to it anymore. What I liked listening to was the chaotic rhythm of dubstep and shit like that. Yeah. That's how it changed up the wiring in my brain got. Yeah. Uh, so couldn't work out anymore. I hated that. You know, I just... Uh, I started to lose everything. And after a few years, you know, of, of hurting the entire time, because that's what it is. You're trying to get away from pain. And, uh, and it was emotional pain, not so much physical anymore. But I uh, lost, well, I lost my family, you know, my son. Uh, we had gotten a settlement for a car accident and she took all of that when it came in, sent it to England, never told me about it, just kind of you know, went that. So I, <laughs> I had no savings. I'd been, you know, burning all of that. So I, I uh, my family, my, you know, my parents, my sister, they stopped talking to me. Uh, extended family, friends stopped talking to me. Training partners, people that live nearby. I lost everyone. And then I started losing everything. I started losing you know, my, uh, my stuff, my home, I got foreclosed on, um, ended up, that's kind of an interesting story. I ended up living in a storage unit, but that was, that was my freedom. Uh, I get to that in a minute. So, you know, here I am losing everything, losing my mind, losing me, losing my passion. I remember looking in the mirror and this is something I, I really, started to understand when I saw this show on HBO called Real Sports. They talk about professional athletes. And once they retire, there's a 75% divorce rate. And it kind of comes about because that focused individual now has no nowhere to put that energy. They don't have, they got rid of this massive area of their life and didn't replace with anything. Yeah. So addiction becomes a thing. Uh, divorce becomes a thing. So all these things that I was going through, you know, I'd stopped training. I'd lost my passion. So that hole I was filling with just other shit. And so slowly, but surely, you know, I'd, I'd started to decrease my amount. And, uh, you know, at this point I had increased the positivity in my life. I had changed my mindset and I was starting to get on the backside of this addiction just a little bit. Uh, and then I lost my house. And, you know, I, I remember feeling that I knew I was going to lose the house because the foreclosure and all that stuff. 
So I started to put my negative energy into it. Like, this is my prison. I can't physically get myself out of here because I just can't get myself uh, put together enough to, to work it out. Yeah. So I know I'm going to be forced out. This is my hell. This is my prison. And when they came to kick me out, you know, the police came, they, they evicted me. And, and I, was, I was this close to getting the stuff that I cared about into a storage unit, the same storage unit that we did the training at for all those years. <laughs> and uh, so I, 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 I was so close. I was really bummed out. And they kicked me out. You know, it hurt. And I remember going to the storage unit with the few things I did actually have in my truck before they came yeah. uh, to unload. And I remember being a little depressed on the one side because it hurts. You know, I was kicked out of my house. But deep down, I knew I was free. Thank God this is finally over. So here I am in this freshly painted truck, not even dried. And it was Boxing Day, uh, December 26th, in the evening, and I was gone. That was my, that was my ride to freedom. Yeah. You know, here I was in this staging point in the storage unit. And I was still using meth at this point, but I greatly reduced the amount. And when I left, I burned all of my connections. You know, I cut phone numbers out. I didn't have any idea what I was going to. So there was nobody there. Yeah. I had just a little bit left and I had to dole it out and I had to really step down and monitor my intake. So that combined with having this mission of I'm going from Houston to Reno. It's a 2000 mile trip. I've got Carlsbad caverns. I got Grand Canyon. I got Mount uh, Zion national park. Yeah. I got all these things that I want to see. So what is a two day trip? turned into 10 because okay. <laughs> I wanted, I looked around when I wanted, I ate when I wanted, I slept when I wanted. And uh, it was the ultimate ride to freedom. I had this, first off, I was excited. I had built this mindset of being grateful for things. So every obstacle that came up was a new fun challenge. And the addiction was just losing its control it's losing its stranglehold because I had something else to replace it. Yeah. You know, and I didn't realize at the time that that was what was going on. But looking back, that was the most powerful way of getting off of anything ever. And uh, by the time I got to Reno, the, the meth was gone. And there was only a couple points where I kind of woke up and thought, God, you know, I really could use, I, I would like it right now. But yeah having no connections i had to just let that thought go and then carry on with my day brilliant and, you know it only took a couple of weeks for that to clear my system but combined with that positive mindset i couldn't wait to get in the gym again so you hadn't trained at all in this period what's that you hadn't trained at all in this period of time no no i i had kind of lifted a couple times here or there because i had stuff in my garage I remember at one point trying to 600 pound deadlift. It didn't move, um, you know, and that was a couple of years before even this point. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, maybe, maybe four or five times in a year at most. Yeah. You know, I had done some things with grip. Yeah. Just because I was doing scrap metal as well. I, you know, when I pick stuff up, I'd pick up things I could scrap. And I remember I had this challenge where I would take a printer and I would rip the whole thing apart with my bare hands. And I got pretty good at it, you know, just <laughs> like bending bars. I, you know, I had really strong forearms and a grip at that point, but uh, that was the only real any kind of strength yeah. training. Um, but uh, I remember getting there January 7th and then training January 15th for the first time. And I did a little bit of upper body stuff. Uh, the next week, I tried to deadlift. I went, <laughs> I put 405, which is 185 kilos or so on the bar. I did three reps, and I thought it had broken my back. <laughs> That's how much I had lost. Because, I mean, when I, was, when I was in the storage unit, I'd eat one time every day and a half. So yeah. I'd eat 
morning and then like the next evening and then like the next whole you know what what did your body weight come down to so that interesting thing there i remember at one point during the the darkness kind of asking you know when is this hell going to be over with and that little voice in the back of my head pops up and says you're going to start over yeah i knew what that meant i knew that everything i had gained with strongman was gone yeah. i was going to have to start over and oddly enough at my very first competition with Marshall, I weighed 227 pounds. I was technically a lightweight, still competed with the big boys. Um, the first day I walked back in the gym, I was 227 pounds. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, I had been 341, yeah. 105 kilos down to 102 kilos. And uh, yeah, I gained weight pretty quick when I started eating again and training. Uh, not all of it good. I think I gained something like uh, 70 pounds, like 32 kilos in a couple of months. Yeah. And then uh, a lot of it muscle, a lot of it fat, but kind of I, I peaked and then I dropped it back down and, and built up slowly since then. But, <clears throat> you know, something, your metabolism changes when you get off meth you start gaining weight really quickly. <laughs> you don't see many meth heads that are, are big. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so pleased to sort of hear you, you're kind of on the way back up and, you know, to see you back competing again now, it's, it's so good. Because, like, for a long time, you know, we, we were good friends, you know, before it all, and then you know, you try and contact you on social media, like Facebook and stuff like that. We used to message each other. I'd message yeah. you and there would just be no reply or, you know, and there was never any update. So you, you just sort of, you, you lose touch with people and then yeah. you obviously don't know what Drop they're, they're the yeah. But to see you, to see you back in strongman now, <laughs> back competing, feeling positive, putting your, your negative experiences to a positive use now and helping so many people. I mean, I, mean, I know sure. you've done a few of the champions leagues again, yeah. Do you want to get back to world's strongest man? What are the, I do. Is it, yeah, I a hundred percent do. I a hundred percent do. So, you know, I, uh, I've always been friends with Marcel who runs champions league. So that was kind of my natural first step. Uh, and, and even with my history, my track record, and this is where people need to start learning. Cause I get this question a lot. How do you get into champions league? Well, swallow your pride and ask. Yeah. So I sent Marcel an email. I said, look, Hey, I'm training. I'm ready. I really want to compete. I will get myself over there if you let me compete. So I had to pay my way to Serbia, like 1700 bucks or something. And he said, okay, if you get here, you know, I'll, I'll put you in a hotel room and we'll feed yeah. you. You get here, you pay that part and compete. Cool. If you know, if you're, if you are where you say you are, then uh, we'll see what happens after that. So I went over there and I, I kicked ass. I got second place. And that was the other side of that is put on a fucking show. If you yeah. want to go to a contest and then get invited back, have fun and put on a show. Very so fun. had fun. I did well. And then I got invited back to more champions leagues. And then, Do you know, I'd love to see you over in the UK at one of the big arena shows. I think oh, you, man. you deserve a shot at one of them because the sport has grown so much since you, you've been away from it. <laughs> and I know how much you would love the atmosphere and the, the, the fans sure. are just, the, the fans over here are awesome. You know, you can be in front <laughs> of 10,000 people. It, it's a, it's an incredible experience. I mean, for me, when I won Europe's strongest man in front of 12,000 screaming British fans, Eddie Hall breaking the deadlift record that night, I beat yeah. Thor at Europe's strongest man. You know, I'm never going to say I'm better than Thor, but that was my night. It was my night. It was a brilliant show. And just having feeding off that electricity in front of all those people, it, it's oh, man, a spine chilling moment. Static in the air, yeah. electricity charging. Oh, I, I know how much you would enjoy it. So we, we got <laughs> to see you at one of those. That that's got to happen. I think you'd enjoy well, that more invited, than most I got invited to one of the Giants live shows, uh, but unfortunately that was postponed because of all this shit going on. So Hopefully it'll be back. Got the invite. So I plan on earning my spot, the world's strongest man. And 
kicking ass. I want to, I want to knock some of these new guys around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to teach them a lesson. I'd like to see you 